Then you have the NPP sending their communicators, their members of parliament into the media to insult this respected, respected chief, this revered chief, who did not insult anybody. He didn't insult President Ekufuado. He didn't insult Godfrey Dame. He didn't insult the NPP. He only expressed his opinion that in my opinion, I think he should abort this criminal trial. Then you have a very senior lawyer, a man I used to respect, Samu Kujitu, come out to say that the Domahine's comments, of course, but for, for, for him, I lost respect for him the day he said that Domahine's comment was senseless. That is the day I lost respect for him. Because I, I, clearly this is not a man who has respect for authority. How can he be describing the Domahine's comment as senseless? What did he say which is senseless? Senseless? Virtually insulting his person. When all the man has done is to express his opinion, which he is entitled to, and his opinion does not breach any ethic of the bar or any ethic of the bench, I dare Samoku to, to show us one ethic of the bench or the bar that Domaini has breached. He didn't even comment on the court matter. He only made an appeal to the age who has the discretion to enter lowly prosecutor. Simply put, that you will not prosecute a criminal matter. And then you come and insult him and say he is making senseless comments. That is the day I lost respect for him. Then you have the majority leader also coming out with threats uh, from, based on what the Domahine has said, his promotion will, be, will suffer. Could. 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 Why, why must they even be thinking? You see, these people, they behave as if they are a mafia group. That is, they operate like a typical Mexican mafia. Their modus operandi is intimidation and threats. So a chief, who is also a high court judge, Know the law better than you, USH Menzabuz. Makes an appeal to the Attorney General, in whom the prosecutorial powers of the state are vested. That, in my opinion, I think you should enter lawly prosecutor in this matter. And you come and tell the judge, who is a paramount chief, who won't know? Is he not scared? You come and tell him that your, your promotion could suffer. Who do they think they are? Who do they think they are? So if you don't promote him, will you, USH Menzabuz, will you be in power forever? They should wait and see. They are not, they are not God. Who. That is why they lost miserably at a send off. As for talking there, like the boys' boys say this, this they can say what they want. You understand? But God is the one who promotes people. And by the grace of God, Domahini will be promoted to the place he deserves in the judiciary. No man born of a woman can stop that. And then you have the, the comic hour, uh, Katie Hammond, comes out, talks by heart. Uh, Domahine is an NDC propagandist. He is this, he is that. Then you have another NPP communicator set on TV, TV3. He's called uh, what? J. Hyde. Virtually insulting Domahine. Virtually insulting Domahine. Totally unacceptable. You guys should be tolerant of dissent. You should be tolerant of divergence. That is what democracy is about. And not to conclude. Mm. On this second matter and the arguments my brother is making. And first of all, this argument by Oku Boy that um, um, per our constitutional framework, there is an inherent bias in the work of the Attorney General and all that. Yes, I get his drift, but it still doesn't stop citizens of Ghana from making an appeal to the Attorney General to enter on the prosecutor. You understand? Why? Uh, it was the Kofu administration that was prosecuting former first lady could not do Marolis. And yet, they entered on the prosecutor at some point. Irrespective of the intrinsic bias in that constitutional arrangement. Why? The constitu the, that intrinsic bias was there, and yet, you entered on the prosecutor in the case of Aisha Huan, a Chinese lady, nicknamed Galam Save Queen, who had destroyed our water bodies through illegal mining, destroyed our forest reserves. And even, if you look at some reports from the media, by the media, even done certain things that has led to the loss of human life. If you look at the reports on this Aisha one by Erastus, yet you set him free. You said that jailing her was not going to benefit the country in any way. You did the same thing in the case of the eight members of the Delta Forces who attacked the Ashanti Regional Coordinating Council. You entered Nolly Prosequa. 
irrespective of all these issues you are raising. So why can't somebody make that appeal? It is well within your right to say, I won't listen to you. Nobody is putting a gun to your head to listen to us. Whether you listen to us or not, justice belongs to God. The courts of, the, the courts of heaven have already spoken on this matter. The court of public opinion has already spoken on this matter. They have said that Jane Jaji Kwisin is fit, um, fit to be the member of parliament for the people of Asenov. And no amount of prosecution or judicial manipulation can change that. Now finally, Doc, there is no, no, um, um, what should I even say? How should I put it? There is no connection, okay, between the Sakande case and the Kwesin matter. We've done this explanation over and over again. It's like we are preaching to the deaf. Our friends in the MPP must understand that. Go and read the second day judgment. What was it about? It was about a member of parliament. Who why, do you, why do you blame them when even the Supreme Court, in parts of its decision, makes the point? And there was a particular line which said that, that the second day case is was on all fours. Yes, yes. When, in fact, what they quoted said otherwise. Yes, because but I'm saying, why do you blame but, but me? You see, I'm reading and that is what we have learned said. judges. No, no, but what, and this is their position. Oh, the but you see... And I, I repeat, uh, say... Let me tell you something. Some time ago, learned justices of the Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision, in a case popularly called in Riyakuto, yes, determined that Bafo Akutu and the seven others were incarcerated by the Nkrumah regime properly and in accordance with law, and that their detention under the Preventive Detention Act was constitutional. Mm -hmm. There was nothing done against their human rights. But today, we don't quote that again. Is so it, so the fact is that the most famous uh, case at the law school. The most infamous. <laughs> you understand? Even though it was a unanimous decision. Yeah. If you check the application for review that has been filed by the venerable lawyer Chachu Chikata, he points out 17 fundamental and basic errors of law in that ruling. Because in the Sakande case, if you read the judgment of the very respected Databan, retired Justice of the Supreme Court. Professor. What did he say? He says that the Sakande case was, a, was about whether or not, I can read that to you when you come back to me, whether or not, at the time of Sakande's election on 7 December 2008, and at the time of his swearing in, whether or not he held a UK passport. And the case was also about his continuous breach of the constitution because even at the time he was in parliament working, he was still traveling on a UK passport and on his Burkina Bay passport. You are talking about Honorable Jinja Chikwese, who as far back as December 2019 had applied to renounce his Canadian citizenship. The Supreme Court concedes that. And the Supreme Court concedes that at the time of his election, on 7 December 2020, he had renounced his Canadian citizenship and had received his certificate of renunciation. That indeed he got it on 26 November 2020, 10, 10 days to his election. Again, the Supreme Court concedes in their judgment that at the time of Judge Kwesi swearing in to commence his work as Member of Parliament, he was not a Canadian citizen and he didn't owe allegiance to Canada. He never sat in our parliament with dual allegiance or dual nationality. Mm. And yet, the Supreme Court said this man, who never entered our parliament with dual allegiance or dual nationality, had renounced that before he entered our parliament, should be disqualified and his election annulled because at the time he submitted his nomination forms, he had dual nationality and therefore dual allegiance. When the, the constitutional provision they were interpret, interpreting, Article 94.2a says, a person is not qualified to be a member of parliament mm. if he owes allegiance to a country other than Ghana. He is not qualified to be a member of parliament. He didn't say he is not qualified to be a parliamentary candidate. He didn't, he didn't say that he is not qualified to submit nomination forms. He is not qualified to be a member of parliament. When does somebody become a member of parliament? When he is elected and is sworn in. And if you have considered that at the time he didn't owe dual nationality, why the Bulabalo? <laughs> then they say that, oh, it is at the time of your nomination. That, that cannot be true because the representation of the People's Law, FNDC Law 284, Section 20 of that says 
that qualification must be at the time of election. That parliamentary election should be cancelled only if the candidate was not qualified at the time of his election. You understand? And section 92 of the same law, PNDC law 284, says that when it comes to your qualification to be, or your qualif the, quali the eligibility criteria that you should be a citizen 21 years and above, you must meet that criteria as at the time of your nomination. That's 91 of PNDC law 284. But when it comes to the eligibility criteria for you to be an MP, that is you not owing dual allegiance to a country other than uh, allegiance to a country other than Ghana. It should be at the time of your election. But be that as it may, and I'll conclude with this point. Even if, and I'm demonstrating to you, I'm making this argument to demonstrate to you that the Supreme Court decision was a travesty of justice that has been righted by the good people of Asenov, rightly so. Even if we're go, supposed to go by the thinking of the Supreme Court, that he had to have renounced his nationality of Canada. That is even assuming that nationality, uh, citizenship is the same as allegiance, which is not the case. But I would, don't want to go into that. We don't have time. The Supreme Court is saying that he should have renounced. He should have received his certificate of renunciation as at the time he was submitting his nomination forms. But they forgot that in the Papa Kwesi Indium case that they themselves determined, they said that the nomination period goes beyond the nomination days. That the nomination period is not the period where a candidate takes a form and then submits. It goes beyond that. And that the nomination period includes the period that the EC, the electoral management body, uses to scrutinize the form so submitted and must give a hearing to persons to candidates, okay, in relation to any matters arising from those forms. So in the Papa Kwesi Indium case, even though Papa Kwesi Indium and ODK and those people had already submitted their nomination form, the Supreme Court said the nomination period had not ended. And therefore, the EC, after they realized that these candidates had made mistakes in filling their forms, should have given them a hearing within the nomination period to correct those wrongs. In the case of Jachi Kwesi, the man picks his forms by the 5th of October, submits him on the 9th of October 2020. Per this decision of the Supreme Court, it meant that the nomination period had not ended. And it extended to when the EC had scrutinized his forms and had made a determination that we have either rejected or accepted it. Then the petition comes after the submission, immediately after. Mm -hmm. And the man is given a hearing in line with the law. Public Election Regulations 2020, he's given a hearing at the EC headquarters in Accra. And he comes, and by that time, he has a certificate of renunciation. The setting was on the 27th of November 2020 at the EC headquarters. His certificate had come on the 26th of November 2020. He shows it to you within the nomination period. Then you then make a determination that his nomination is proper. And then accept his nomination. It is at that time that the nomination period closed. So why didn't the EC... Mm -hmm. Why didn't the EC make the case? They, you know? they, they said they were not going to talk. Why, why wasn't there a joinder? They were, they, were, they were defendants in the matter, but no, they didn't yes, even respond. I'm saying that they were defendants. They decided not to respond to yes. defend their own decision. Yes. Why didn't, the, why didn't uh, Kwesi's lawyers um, file a joinder? Well, because when you allege something in court and it is not rebutted, it is considered accepted. And so we had alleged in our statement of case and all that, and the processes we had filed, okay. that the EC had set up a committee to review the nomination of Honorable Kwesin on the back of that petition. Mm. The petitioners failed to adduce evidence showing that Kwesin had dual allegiance, mm. and that based on the certificate of renunciation, which was presented at the time, mm. the EC had judged Kwesin as qualified mm. and fit to stand. And they did not dispute that. And so it, it, alre it was already admitted. So that's the reason. That is the reason why. Okay. And, then, and then finally, finally, Doc, mm. what, what is even more, what is even more, um, more, more, so, more, more intriguing about minute. this court yeah. matter? You, you spoke at length. You were speaking wow. guy in the process and all that. You even okay. spoke guy for about 15 years. Oh, no, no. What is even more so, surprising no. about this entire Supreme Court decision is that you say Honorable Kwesin is not was not qualified to be elected as an MP. Why? Because you say, according to the Supreme Court, 
he owed allegiance to Canada mm. at the time of his election. Now, if you are going to say that somebody owes allegiance to Canada, let's use common sense here. Mm. How must that be determined? Doc, if right now I say that you owe allegiance to Canada, how do we determine that indeed Dr. Randiabe owes allegiance to Canada? It has to be based on a law, right? Mm. What law? Canadian law. Mm. Because whether or not somebody owes allegiance to Canada can only be determined not by Ghana law, yes. but by Canadian law. Yeah. And per section 1, subsection 2 of the Evidence Act of Ghana, any matter that pertains to foreign law, the law of a foreign country, is a question of fact. Yes. That must be determined by the court through evidence. Yeah. So in the Jomoro matter, yeah. the Castofe matter, that is why when the MPP were alleging that the lady owed allegiance to Ivory Coast at the time of her election. Mm. The court said, okay, proof. And Eduji, the lawyer for Dockers, did a great job there. Had to call an expert witness. Mm. Because foreign law is a question of fact. You must lead evidence. And the evidence to lead is expert evidence to show what is the law of Côte d'Ivoire on allegiance. Before the judge in that Jomoro case determined that, oh, no, the lady did not owe allegiance to Côte d'Ivoire, mm. even though her certificate of renunciation had not come at the time of the election. Mm. Yet in the same manner, same facts, same case as the question matter, a high court judge decides to go to Wikipedia to, to refer but, to what he considers to be the law in, in Canada. In the case of Jamara, mm -hmm. the defendant mm -hmm. was the one who took the pains to bring yes. an expert witness. Yes. To make her case, yes. why they didn't? Yes. And in fact, let me give you another example. In the case of Sumala Bilbo, the Sakande case yes. too, the Supreme Court gave the defendant the opportunity to open his defense and to call witnesses, okay. where you called in passport officers and so but on and so forth. Prevented. Prevented both in the High Court and in it the was Supreme prevented Court. From yes, doing that. we made that case that you cannot determine this issue of allegiance mm. unless you take expert evidence on the. Issue of allegiance to Canada. That. Denied that in the Supreme Court. So how did the Supreme Court determine that right. Jati Kwesi owed okay. allegiance to Canada? Right. Okay. You understand? Right. So okay. I'm happy that the good people of Asen North have spoken. Mm. Sovereignty re uh, 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 resides in them. Mm. Justice emanates from them. They know what is good for them. They have spoken. Mm. God has spoken in this matter. Mm. Whether the enemies like it or not, Jati is the first gentleman of Asen North. He's their member of parliament. Mm. And in my opinion, I look through the crystal ball, I see him finishing the stand by the 7th of January 2025. All right.